So a lot of you have seen my last two videos on content mode. Many of you have told me that these videos were valuable to you, but I've also gotten a lot of questions. This is all quite technical and I see a lot of you struggling. In this content mode FAQ, I wanna take some time to go over some questions that I received from you in the comments. Let's dive in. Hey and welcome to the channel. My name is Leon. This channel exists to help you use your web stats to improve your website. I wanna thank everyone that has been liking my videos and has subscribed to the channel recently because that really helps me get these videos out to as many people as I can. As a way to say thank you, I have created a short cheat sheet on how you can grow your website traffic. So whether you have a new domain or an existing domain, if you want to grow your website traffic, just head over to the video description and click the link to download the cheat sheet for free. Also, if you like this video and want to watch more, just head over to my profile because I have created tons of videos over the past year on how to grow your website using your web stats. All right, we're talking about content mode and I'm answering some of your questions from the comments. And the first question that I want to answer, why and when should I use content mode? Is it really necessary for every site? And the truth is, technically it is not required or necessary for every site, but it is required or recommended for a lot of sites. So let's go over when and why you should use content mode. It is required in three situations. If you're using retargeting in Google Ads, so retargeting basically means that when people visit your site, you include those people in some kind of list. So when they leave your site, you'll still be able to retarget them. That of course requires all kinds of data collection. And if you want to keep using that functionality inside of Google Ads, content mode is required by Google. So you need to install content mode. Content mode is also required if you're using GA4 and you want to use more privacy invasive techniques. So for instance, Google Signals is one of those settings. Google Signals governs if you collect, for instance, demographics, but it also enables the advertising features. So if you use that functionality and content mode is not installed, you will get like a big warning inside of GA4 and GA4 will tell you to install content mode. So that is also a scenario where content mode is really required. The third scenario where I would definitely use content mode is if you live in a country where the use of Google Analytics is prohibited without consent. So here in the Netherlands, we're still able to use Google Analytics in every scenario. So even if people deny tracking, we're still able to use Google Analytics under like strict rules. But if you live, for instance, in different country, like here in Europe, there are many countries, for instance, in France, if you install Google Analytics on a website that is targeted on that country, then you'll need consent mode. And I'll explain later why it is so beneficial to use consent mode in that scenario. So those are the three reasons when you definitely should use consent mode. So if you're using retargeting Google Ads, if you use privacy invasive features inside of GA4, for instance, Google Signals, or if you live in a country or you're targeting a country where authorities have forbidden the use of Google Analytics without consent. There is a fourth reason where technically it is not required, but I really recommend that you use consent mode and that is if you have a lot of other marketing tags. So let's say you're not using Google Ads, you're not using GA4, privacy invasive features, and you live in a country like in the Netherlands where you're able to track that. But if you have a lot of other marketing tags on your site, for instance, Meta ads, TikTok ads, Pinterest, in those scenarios, I think constant mode is still very beneficial. So technically you could implement it via a different route, but constant mode has a lot of advantages over the old methods. So I would definitely use constant mode in that scenario as well. All right, so let's talk about the advantages of constant mode. Well, constant mode is definitely better than the old way. Previously to constant mode, we would use exception triggers to make sure that some tags were not fired before consent was given. But this method was like really hard for especially for new GTM users to learn. And what would happen is that often people would forget to set consent on specific tags and then you would, yeah, we would have a setup that was not compliant. So consent mode is really a better way. Like the consent overview gives like a very clear overview, like on what tags still need attention in order to comply 
to regulation. So it's just a lot better, especially once all has been set up. The second reason why concept mode is really a better technology is that it allows for a multi-region setup. And I'm planning on explaining a little bit more about this in next chapter in the video, if I still have time. But multi-region setup, you can have different settings in different regions all in the same setup. There are even more advantages and those advantages only apply to Google Tags. But on Google Tags, consent mode will handle delayed consent. So what's delayed consent? Well, this is often the case on the very first page view that your users have. So let's say this is a timeline and this is the start of your page view and people enter your site, they load the first page and then the page starts loading. And that is often the moment where you're firing a lot of tags. For instance, the Google Analytics tag, but also your retargeting tags. They all load on the all pages trigger or the initialization all pages trigger. So very early on the page load. But then the page loads and then the cookie banner pops up. And then after a while, they give or refuse consent. So consent is given usually after a lot of tags have been fired. And the Google tag can process delayed consent. So if a consent is not yet given, but consent is given later in the page view, it will still fire those tags, but then delayed. And this applies only to Google tags. So it doesn't apply to Meta ads or Pinterest tags, but still this is really an advantage over consent mode because it handles delayed consent automatically for you. Also, consent mode is really beneficial if you have a lot of people that refuse consent because consent mode will still track like very little, but still tra will track a little bit of data in that scenario. So for instance, GA4, you live in a country where the use of GA4 is prohibited. So you set the defaults to denied. And if people refuse cookies, you wouldn't track anything in that scenario. But consent mode will let you track pings. So that is nothing more than just a signal that somebody is on your page. It doesn't say who, it doesn't include any personal data, but it will send like an anonymous signal to GA4. And then it will use modeling to kind of rebuild that data. So the reports in GA4 will of course lack a lot of data because people have set cookies to denied, but then using modeling, it will kind of restore that part of your reports. And that wouldn't be possible without consent mode. So in that case, you measure, for instance, 50% of your users, but then the rest of the report is kind of modeled. And you will see a notice of that if, if that is applicable to you inside of GA4. It will say, hey, your report is not 100% measured. It, there is some modeling going on here. But that is, of course, the best way, the closest we can get to like a good picture of what's happening on your site. Especially with conversion tracking, you want to know, are there conversions happening on my site? And then that modeling consent mode, it really helps you get a clear picture of what's happening, even if a lot of people refuse to give consent. All right, the second question from the comments that I want to address here is how to approach a multi-region setup. I have made two videos on consent mode, like last week and the week before. If you haven't watched those, I will link them in the video description. One is about how to set up consent mode via CookieBot, like the automatic way, and also one that talks through the manual method. Both of them allow for a multi-region setup. So in this workspace, I have the cookie bot way set up. So you set a multi-region setup. That means that you set defaults for different regions. So in this case, I have the blank row represents like your global defaults. So for countries that haven't set a country specific, the global default will count. So this is kind of the fallback default settings. So I set everything to the night because that way I do not track data in countries where it actually is prohibited. So you could also do it the other way around where you set global defaults to granted. So everything is tracked except for like country specific settings, but I like to do it this way. So I have global settings that say denied to every category. And then the Dutch country specific settings are granted for functional storage and also statistics because under strict rules, we are still able to use Google Analytics. So that's why I use these defaults. So this is how you set it up in the default cookie bot tag. Also, I have a multi-region setup right here. This is the manual method. This is the other video that I showed you to make it like country specific. But if you want to go multi-region on that setup, this is how I would do it. So under tags, I have a consent mode template tag from Simohava right here. And um, uh, this is what I used in the video that I mentioned, but I made a global default and I also made a like a country specific default tag here. And the global default, again, I have set all the defaults to denied 
except for security storage. And uh, the Netherlands, so the country specific default, I have set this to and the storage granted and also the functional cookies granted. So that is one change that I made. Also what I did is under the update tag, I made sure that the update tag is only running when somebody uh, accepted cookies. So in this case, I made a different trigger, consent initialization and then preferences set. And this is how it looks. So this only fires if cookie consent does not contain undefined. So if cookie consent is present, it will not contain undefined. And if it's present, that means that somebody has accepted or denied cookies. And then this will fire. And that makes sure that the update tag will not override the country specific defaults when cookies have not been accepted or denied. So that's what I did here. And the tag, I also changed a little bit because I have made variables for every category here. So add storage, add storage, add storage. That's for the marketing category in my cookie banner. But also I made a lookup variable for analytics storage and for preferences because I want to map all the preferences to the specific fields in consent mode. And um, I can show you real quick how these uh, variables look. So this is the lookup variable for analytics storage. I'm just using the CookieBot banner. So just go back, watch that other video where I explain in detail how you can figure out how to set this. But if you are using the same cookie banner as me, which is CookieBot, then uh, these are the settings. So I'm looking for statistics, semicolon true in the cookie consent uh, cookie. Then it is granted, otherwise it's denied. And then preferences is the same, but then I'm looking for preferences, semicolon true then it is granted and also denied. And please check if you have these advanced settings uh, set up correctly. All right, so that is how I would approach a multi-region setup. Let's also look at how you can test a multi-region setup. I need to confess that I also struggle with this a little bit. I dove into the documentation and they say, well, just hit preview mode and um, open up your page. By the way, you need to make sure that you haven't accepted or refused cookies because this will allow the default command to run, but not the update command. And they all say, like, hey, you can right click and then hit inspect and then go into this panel. You have this panel right here and then press command shift P or control shift P, depending if you're on a Mac or on a PC and then hit sensors. Yeah, there you go. So you can just type sensors and then it will appear right at the top. If you open this up, you have this location drop down, and here you can select different locations and you can even manage, hit manage and then you can add in new locations to test from. But I found this not to work as expected because like right now I'm testing from the Netherlands and then I expect my region specific settings to apply, which is uh, working fine. But if I test Berlin, for instance, I haven't made any region specific settings. And um, if I test this, I still get my country specific settings. So, well, I have set all the things correctly, but I still do not get the right results that I expect. So I'm kind of wondering if this method is really working or if something is maybe wrong with extension that I'm using. It could be anything going on right now, but this is the official method that they point to in the documentation. I will put a link in the video description to every piece of information that I found on this. But if I would test my country specific setup, I would probably purchase a VPN and test from different locations in the world from there. So there are different options here. I'm not currently using VPN right now, so I cannot recommend you one, but I'm sure if you look for a good VPN, you'll be able to find one. And that will make sure that you're absolutely testing from, for instance, the United States or from different locations around the world. All right, the third question that I want to answer is how to set up consent mode using Cookie Yes, because I saw like a lot of comments pointing to cookie yes and also a couple of weeks ago i implemented cookie yes for one of my customers so i thought why not share what i've learned about this cookie banner cookie yes has their own documentation i'll put a link in the video description to that as well uh, please try that first i found that way of implementing not to work properly in my situation so i chose a different route i'm going to share my own setup but it might be a little bit more complex it might not apply to your situation. So please check their documentation first. If you just follow all the steps, you should be able to try that. But if for some reason it doesn't work, you can also try my method. And this is how I've implemented it. So I'm running cookies in this uh, workspace right here. I'm in test mode and this is how it looks. This is the control panel of cookies. I'm under advanced settings. And what I did, I disabled Google consent mode from this, from here. And I also disabled this functionality, allow Google text to fire from consent. What I also did is I included 
the cookie yes banner from Google Tag Manager because I found that to be best fitting for my situation. So I'm not running it via the WordPress plugin or I'm not including the code snippet in the page directly. So if you have done that and you want to follow my approach, remove the plugin and remove the code snippet from your site and then implement it via Tag Manager. So this is the cookie yes template that I used. And these are the settings that I chose. So analytics cookies enabled. Again, here in the Netherlands, that is still allowed under some strict rules. And then functional, I enabled that. And I didn't choose a multi-region setup. So these are my settings for the cookie banner. So I do use consent mode, like the default command from this banner template. And then I chose to use the a different template, the Simo Hava template to run the update command. And if you want to know exactly how this works, uh, there's a link in the video description to a video that I did last week on how to set up consent mode with any cookie banner. And this is the method that I'm using here, but then only for the update command because the default command I use from the default template. So the update command, I chose these settings. I have one variable consent mode at storage that I use for these three fields to set correctly. And um, let me show you the settings for those variables as well. So first of all, I have a cookie variable. This pulls in the content from the cookie yes cookie. So these are the settings that I use. So I have first party cookie variable with this name. Again, this will pull in the, the preferences that users have set. I chose to decode the URL cookie. And then I made this consent mode at storage variable. So it's a regex table that has the cookie variable as input. And then if it contains advertisement semicolon yes, it will say granted and otherwise it will say denied. And again, advanced settings, these are important. And I use this variable in the update command, as you can see here. I haven't made variables for analytic storage and the functional cookies, but if you would want to do that, this is how it would look. So to pull in the analytics consent, you could do something like this, like a regex table with uh, again, the cookie as input variable. And if it contains analytics semicolon no, you can output granted. Otherwise you can output denied. Again, check the advanced settings and for the functional storage, these are the settings. So, so this is how I have set up consent mode with the cookie yes consent mode solution. But again, these are my own specific settings. This works well for me for the requirements that I have, but it might be a little bit too complex for you. So please go ahead and follow the guidelines from CookieS first. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you still have more questions about consent mode, please do not hesitate and leave them down in the comments below. If I see like questions pop up multiple times, I might do another follow-up video with like frequently asked questions or something like that. And of course I will try to answer as many of your questions in the comments directly as well. For now, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.